Hi, this is Manuel with Antagma, and today I present you a quick tip about Blender 3.3 Alpha because recently they added the UV unwrapping to geometry nodes. This means you are now able to do procedural UV unwrapping, and that is a long awaited feature, so let me quickly show you how this works. So let's dive into Blender 3.3 Alpha and let's get started. To have something to UV unwrap, let's build some procedural rocks first. Select everything, delete everything, and now let's start with a plane. Let's call it rock, like so. So, and let's create a new viewport, switch this over to be a geometry nodes editor and create a new geometry nodes tree. Now let's cut this connection and instead let's create an icosphere that I want to use as, as a basis for my rock. Let's up the subdivisions to three to have some geometry to work with. And now let's deform this by a noise field, create a noise texture, noise texture, and we want to use the vectors coming out of this noise texture that come out in the form of a color. So to center them around the origin, we will need a map range node set to vector. And now we want to connect the color here and map the ranges to ranges between minus one and one. This did not work, minus one and one, like so. And now to apply these noise vectors, we need a set position node, set position, put it here, and let's connect the noise to the offset of the set position node. And this gives us a crumply sphere. Now let's go down with the noise to 0 0.5, which is a little nicer, like so. And we want to make the input to the noise texture explicit by laying down a position node, position. And if we now add to this position using a vector math, we can move through the noise field and create different variations of this noise, creating a procedural rock. But at the moment it looks a little boring because strength of the effect is everywhere the same. And to make a more irregular rock, I want to use a second noise texture to vary how far the displacement reaches out. So let's just duplicate this noise texture and duplicate this add because this one should be sampled at a different location. So put this here and this there. And now let's use just another vector math node set to multiply to make the effect stronger or less strong. You can see now it's zero and I can exaggerate the effect. And to do this, I want to use the noise texture. So let's put this noise texture in, which varies the effect. The problem is these vector values here are between zero and one again. So one last range map, range map to adapt these values to meaningful ones. And the noise usually lives somewhere between 0 0.4 and 0 0.6. So let's put 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 for the input range and let's increase the output range to three. Now you can see the extrusion is stronger in some areas and in others it's weaker. And by moving through this noise, we can decide where the effect is stronger, creating a more irregular shape. The problem with this now is that we get stretchy triangles, of course, because the displacement is quite extreme. So why don't we make use of the volume nodes inside of geometry nodes to remesh this? And to remesh this, we need two nodes. First, we want to convert this into a volume, and then we want to convert the volume back into a mesh. So let's put volume here in the search field, and you will find, new to Blender 3.3, the mesh to volume node which create a volume out of a mesh. So if you put this here and then this to the geometry output, you see that we get a volume derived from the mesh. Let's switch this to size and let's go down with a voxel size to 0.1 to give it a little more resolution or maybe even 0.05. Now we have a nice representation of this mesh as a volume. And now we can convert this back into a mesh using the volume to mesh node creating a remeshing of our object. And that is our procedural rock. So now if you go over here and move through the noise, you can create different varieties of procedural rock and you can vary the strength of the effect too. Nice, but it is a little rough. I want to smooth it. And unfortunately there is no smooth operator inside of geometry nodes yet, but we can make use of the modifier stack. So here is a geometry nodes modifier creating the rock. So why don't we name this rock generator? After this comes a new modifier, the smooth. So just put a smooth here and up the iterations to 10 and this will smooth out the effect. And maybe one last thing, we can maybe just wire this to the geometry input to externalize this property because now we can change the settings from here, creating this procedural shape, which looks quite interesting. Now, the problem with these shapes is that you don't have UVs on them up until now, because now inside of Blender, you can create UVs procedurally. 
So let's do this using a second geometry nodes tree that comes after the smith. So let's create a new geometry nodes tree down here, a new tree and call this series like so. Because of the stack nature of this, the smooth geometry comes in over the geometry port and we can just work with it. And we want to use the new UV unwrap node. You can see this node takes a seam selection or a polygon selection, then does the standard blender UV unwrapping and writes out the result as UV vectors. But before we can use this node, we have to think about how to create seams procedurally, because this is not meant to be used with a standard workflow of painting seams on the geometry. Instead, we have to come up with a measure to create seams. If you use it without seams, nothing will happen. So I want to base my seam generation on normals. For this, I will need a normal node and I want to split the normal into its components by using a separate XYZ. I want to base my seam generation on the X component. I just want to lay down a compare node and I want to compare the X component if it is greater than or equal than zero. That effectively gives me two sides, the side where the normal is pointing in the plus x direction and the side that is pointing in the minus x direction. And now I want to split my mesh up based on this boolean here. So let's lay down a delete geometry here and connect this value here. And you see that is everything that is pointing in the minus x direction. And if I invert this by just laying down a math and then subtract one minus a selection that effectively inverts a selection like so, you can see we have the other part. Now I want to split the mesh in two parts and then UV unwrap them and then put the mesh back together. So let's duplicate this delete geometry node and for the first one I want to use a boolean directly, for the second one I want to use the inverted selection. And after that, I can now use join geometry to put the two pieces back together. But now they are distinct, like so. Don't forget to connect your geometry here. And now you have two parts. The part that is oriented along the plus x axis and the part that is oriented along the minus x axis. To fix these artifacts here, let's just switch the delete node from point to face face and we have our entire object back. But it is still two parts so the points at the border are overlapping. And now we can use the UV unwrap. But before we do this we want to make sure to use a material that can actually use the UV unwrap. So let's go to the shader editor for now and let's quickly create a new material. I will call it my UV just to remember what this is for. And now I want to create an image texture. And for the image texture, I want to create one of these typical color grids and I connect it here. And now comes the thing, you are not able to write to the UV map of the object directly because this is procedural geometry. So we want to use an attribute instead. So let's prepare this by laying down an attribute node. And let's read an attribute that is not existing yet called my UVs, like so. And this will be a vector and that's connected here to the sampling vector of this texture. And by the way, switch to viewport shading to be able to see the texture. Back to geometry nodes. Now first we want to apply this material by putting down a set material node at the very end, my UV. And now we want to write this attribute. And that is easy. We can just drag the UV to one of these hollow ports here and that writes the attribute. But before it works, we want to go here and to the output attributes of our second geometry node tree and call this my UVs because that is the attribute that the shader graph is expecting. And you see immediately it is working. Now you get automatic UVs because the geometry is first split, then one part is unwrapped and the second part is unwrapped and the UVs are set and we are using them in the shader. The thing is that the points are still double here. So let's just put down a merge by distance node to put the object back together and put it here. But oh no, what happened? As soon as we do this, everything vanishes. And this has to do with the way that geometry nodes is executed. Because the scope of a node is always determined by the node that it is connected to. So the scope of the UV unwrap is determined by this group output. And before we used the merge by distance, that meant that each point got a UV value. And then these UV values were converted to the domain of face corner because UVs are stored in the face corner domain. And everything worked. But now that we put the merge 
storage here. We don't have any seams anymore and the UV unwrap cannot work. So we have to make sure that the UV unwrap is executed before the merge. And fortunately we can do this inside of geometry nodes by using a capture attribute. The capture attribute is there for exactly this purpose. It allows you to specify where to execute a node. So let's take this capture attribute and put it here before the merge by distance and set the domain from point to face corner because face corner is a correct domain for UVs. Now set the attribute that we want to create to vector and connect the UV unwrap here. This node evaluates the UV unwrap inside of the face corner domain on the geometry that is still split apart. And if we now connect the output of this to our UV, it will work again. But we get some ugly interpolation around the edges, as you can see here. And that is because the attribute that we created here is still in the point domain. But as I told you, UVs are used in the face corner domain. So the very last step to perform is to go to the end panel and then to the group tab here and switch the attribute domain for the UV output attribute from point to face corner. Now it stores the data in the right form and it outputs it to my UVs and the shader can read it. And this way you can create procedural UV unwrapping for your assets finally. And this is of course very simple. You can come up with a different heuristic of determining where to put the individual seams, but for now this will work. And if you go to our first rock generator tree, you can create different rock by putting in a different number. And not only will it generate a new rock, but it will generate a new UV map to. And for rocks, this is probably sufficient. So thank you for listening. I hope you learned something. And with this, it is cheers and goodbye. If you like what we are doing, please consider becoming a Patreon. Not only for supporting Antagma, but for access to in-depth courses on topics such as particles, vellum, geometry nodes, and so on and so forth. And at this point, let me say thank you so much to all our existing Patreons. Without you, this channel would not be possible. Thank you.